for this week, we have our patient Doris, and Doris is undergoing her daily wound care. Tre the treating therapist describes the wound as a three by five by four centimeter wound with pink granulation tissue throughout the wound bed and non-adherent black tissue surrounding the borders. Which of the following interventions is the most effective to treat this wound type? So we have A, Whirlpool, B, wet to dry dressings, C, pulsatile lavage at 12 PSI, pounds per square inch, and D is Sharp's debridement. All right, I was just telling the people on live about, you know, the importance of understanding integument and the different modalities on how to treat wound care. Uh, you know, he, looking at this question, I already know that I have to have a good understanding of what type of debridement uh, strategies I can use or would be the best. And that is how we dominate an area like this, a question like this. So let's go ahead and start off at the top. It says Doris. Uh, undergoing her daily wound care. All right, so let's take a look at this one. We've got a patient undergoing daily wound care. Nothing significant is here. Let's move on to the next sentence. It says the treating therapist describes the wound as a three by five by four centimeter with pink granulation tissue throughout the wound bed. I'm gonna go ahead and stop there. So we're talking about describing the wound. We got three by five by four. We're talking about the width. Um, we're also talking about the length and the depth here. We can see that this is a pretty deep wound. Again, I'll read those numbers to you, though, those of you who are on podcast right now, three by five by four centimeter. So it's a pretty decent size wound here as far as the size of it and the depth of it. Now it does say with pink granulation tissue. My question to you is, is that a good thing? We know they got, we got a relatively deep uh, wound here, but how about the pink granulation tissue? Is that significant? Is that good? Is it bad? Like, So you should be saying pink granulation tissue is known as healthy tissue. That's what I want to really leave alone. I don't want to be messing around with that tissue too much because it's healing well. Now it says that pink granulation tissue is throughout the wound bed, all right? And then we have non-adherent black tissue that's surrounding the borders. And so that's my next question to you is, what about this non-adherent black tissue? What is that called? Should be saying SCAR, right? That's necrotic tissue, tissue that's dead. And my other question to you is, should I leave that alone? Should I get rid of it? What should I do about it? So you should be saying, well, it's great that it's non-adherent. That makes it a lot easier to get rid of it. But that dead tissue, we need to remove it. It's non-healthy, non-valuable tissue, um, so we need to get rid of it. Cool. Now, the final sentence, the last uh, part of this question says, which of the following interventions is the most effective to treat this wound type? And so let me summarize that question for you, give you the big recap picture here. So we got a wound that's three by five by four. All right, we got a wound that has pink granulation tissue pretty much throughout the wound bed, but black tissue, necrotic tissue surrounding the borders. Now, remember that black tissue is what we call non-adherent. It's not stuck to the wound. So now we're asking which of the following interventions is most effective to treat this wound type. So we have our four answers for those of you on podcast. Let me go through these again. So we got A, Whirlpool, B, wet to dry dressings, C, pulsatile lavage, at 12 PSI, and D is Sharp's debridement. Let's go down one by one. Whirlpool, you may have heard this one uh, come up before. MPT school, maybe you read about it in the text. It's actually a form of mechanical debridement, all right, where we're using some type of external type of modality, or uh, it can also be, again, hydrotherapy, which is another form or another term for Whirlpool here. So we can use Whirlpool with a wound, can't we? Yes, but you'll see that in the text, we don't really use Whirlpool that much. Why? Because it increases the likelihood of infection. I mean, you put in a patient in the water, if they have a wound, there's just a greater chance that the patient can become contaminated and increase the risk of infection. But not only that, you gotta think of once a patient gets into the Whirlpool, because they've been in it, 
we now have to drain it and refill it again so that the next patient that comes in will not be at risk for infection or getting whatever the previous patient had going on. Does that make sense? So you can see that this is not a cost effective strategy. It's really not a major strategy used. Nowadays, there's other ways that we can achieve cleaning the wound and then also getting rid of non-adherent black tissue. There's other ways to do it. So can I use Whirlpool? The answer to that is, is yes, but would I say it's the most effective way to do it? That's where I'm kind of like, ah, I don't think so. So I'll put an X next to it for now. All right, let's look at B. B says wet to dry dressings. All right, so if you're not familiar with wet to dry dressings, it's usually a gauze pad. Most of us are familiar with that. All right, you what, what you're going to do is you're going to wet the gauze pads typically with a saline solution. So you wet the gauze pad, get it nice and damp and wet, and then you're going to pack the wound with it. Now, all that sounds pretty decent for now. But the only problem is that gauze pad will dry up and now we will have to take the gauze pad out of the wound. That's the reason why they call it a wet to dry because it starts off wet, the gauze pad, it goes to a dry or dries out. And then what you have to do is pull it out of the wound. Now, does that sound very, imagine if you had a wound right now on your leg or your behind or your sacral area, whatever it is. And I use the wet to dry where I'm pulling this, this gauze pad out of the wound bed. It's going to be very painful and it is. But one of the major reasons why I don't like it is it's non-selective, meaning that it is going to yank out some of the healthy pink granulation tissue as well. It's not just going to get the black necrotic tissue. It's going to get the healthy tissue as well. And so I'm not only just causing the patient pain, but I'm also tearing up the healthy tissue. It's not an effective way. I wouldn't use it. All right, let's go ahead and put next next to that one. Let's go to C. C says pulsatile lavage at 12 PSI. This is one of the more common types of mechanical debridement. It's, it's more commonly I don't even know if that is correct to say more commonly, but it, it's it's the most likely used when we're doing mechanical debridement. Definitely more likely than Whirlpool. And so what it is is a pulsatile stream. We're actually um, sending saline solution into the wound in a pressurized manner in order to clean it. But the great thing about pulsatile lavage, also known as pulse lavage, is it also has a suction with it as well. So it's pushing this pressurized saline into the wound in order to clean it and also uh, move around some of the, the, the non-viable tissue, the sloth, if you've ever heard that, dirt or, or necrotic tissue. So it can get that stuff moving pretty good and then there's the suction that pulls it back out. So pulse lavage is a very nice mechanical-based debridement. Now my question to you is, should I use that for this patient? Some of you all who are who are live with me today, you were like, nah, I don't think we should use something like that because it could damage the wound. And you're right. Actually, you got to be very careful with pulse lavage and granulation tissue because it actually can cause damage. You're right. Okay, and you really shouldn't use pulse lavage with granulation tissue if the whole wound is granulated. You, you really shouldn't do that. However, it does say that the borders have black tissue, that necrotic tissue around it. So can I use pulse lavage on the, the wound border? Especially since it says non-adherent, the answer to that is yeah. You can still use pulse lavage. Now let me clear this up so you can write this down in your notes. This is very important. Can you use pulse lavage on a granulating wound, a wound that has pink granulation tissue? The answer to that is yes, as long as the wound has contamination as well. It has colonized bacteria or bacteria that's colonizing the wound or necrotic tissue. If it has one of those three that I just mentioned, contamination, bacteria that's colonizing the wound or necrotic tissue, you can use it. But if the entire wound was just pink granulation tissue, then you wouldn't. No, 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 no. OK, so bottom line, what am I telling you right now? I like C as an answer because the wound does have necrotic tissue that's there. It says non-adherent black tissue. It makes sense. Now, my other part is what about this 12 PSI? Is that too high, too low within normal ranges? 
Well, this is something you should know for your MPTE. Write it down that the normal range for PSI for Pulse Lavage is 4 to 15. You better write that down, baby. 4 to 15. Really important. So C, I like this answer. It's pretty. Pulse Lavage, can I use it? Yes. Can I use 12 PSI? The answer is yes. I'm going to put a check mark next to it for now. Let's look at D. D says Sharps Debridement. This is where a lot of people were hung up between C and D right here. Sharps debridement. Well, what do I primarily use Sharps debridement for? I use it for adherent necrotic tissue. All right. In most cases, I'm using it for inherent necrotic tissue. It is selective because I can go in there with these tools, the, the forceps. And you got the scalpel and all these things. I don't know if you did that during lab and pulled them all out. The sterile environment had the little light blue little <laughs> little pad that you put all your little tools on. Yeah. Sharp's debridement is using all of these different sharp type of tools. And we can go in and do selective debridement taking out the necrotic tissue, the sloth, and whatnot. Now, here's the deal. Sharp's debridement, in most cases, is used for adherent tissue, like where the necrotic tissue is actually adherent to the wound bed. You can't just pull it out. You got to actually cut it out. That's where Sharp's debridement is like a specialist, where Sharp's debridement is used the most. And so in this case, there's non-adherent black tissue. And I'm like, really, do we need to go to the level of Sharp's debridement for non-adherent black tissue? I think that's a little overkill. Um, and then Pulse Lavage can get the job done. Again, it's going to shoot this saline solution into the wound, clean it up, get that, that non-adherent black tissue, like really moving around. And then it has a suction piece that can remove the necrotic tissue after that. I think Pulse Lavage is the better answer out of the two here. So again, I am going to knock down D because it's a bit overkill. Could you do it? You could, but you don't necessarily need to. It's not the most effective. I would say Pulse Lavage at the 12 PSI is our best answer for today. Congratulations to those of you who got this one correct. This is not easy. If this is like a tough area for you, for those of you on the podcast, I'm telling you right now, um, there's a bunch of different types of just concepts like this that are very hard for you to get exactly what you need for the MPTE. If you need help with it, what I've done is, is really put together a bunch of different lectures to help you with concepts just like this. All right, if you go to NPTELectures.com, you can get my lecture library that has these concepts that are addressed, all right, go check it out. And for those of you that are looking at this and you're like, how can I get better at this specific issue? Listen, the way that I've just improved my understanding of it is by pulling out Miklovitz or Cameron and going into what is the actual function of these different types of debridement, pulse lavage, whirlpool, wet to dry dressings with gauze, sharps debridement, and really understanding what they are instead of relying so much on just the review books, which are only giving you a little bitty piece of the full picture that you need to have for the MPTE. Does that make sense? I mean, the, the, those books are only giving you a preview. And if you're weak in this area, we need to get you like something solid that you can latch your teeth into and be like, you know what? Yes, now I truly understand this and I'm ready to apply it on the MPTE. That is my best advice for you right there. All right. But if you need help, definitely with these different areas that come up on the exam. Listen, I've taught lectures about these different topics, MPTE lectures .com.